Welcome to Mimi's Math Channel. Today I will demonstrate how to set up two-way tables for joint, marginal, as well as conditional. So let's get started. Example one, the table shows the results of a poll of 545 randomly selected high school students who were asked if they prefer basketball, football, or band. Make a table of joint and marginal relative frequencies. So if your word problem does not tell you the total, what you would have to do is actually add up each number that's shown under the categories for like in this case, basketball, football, band for the ninth graders, 10th graders, and 11th graders. So you would have to have totals for every column, which is gonna be going up and down and for every row that goes horizontally. All right, so the first table that we're gonna set up is the joint relative frequency table. And what we have to do is take each cell and divide it by the total amount of people. In this case, we're talking about people. So that's why it's important to actually read your word problem, or like I said, just add up all of the numbers. So when I'm doing that, I'm gonna take 68 and divide it by 545, 84 by 545, 59 by 545, and so on and so forth until I finish the chart. So after going through and dividing each cell by 545, these are the answers that I get. Make sure you convert it from a fraction to a decimal. I just rounded it to the nearest hundreds. This is just your joint relative frequency table. The next step asks me to find the marginal relative frequency. So when I do that, I now have to add the totals for each row as well as each column. So this, just think of this as a sheet of paper. You have the margins. So the margins are on the outside and you write something on it. And in addition here, you're gonna be writing in the, the row beneath. So after adding each row and each column, this final box over here should be exactly one. It should not be a decimal. One represents 100% of your data that's accounted for. So now example two, we're gonna do conditional relative frequency. And it's based off of the table, the original table, but the only difference is the totals are now added to this one. And what really happens with your conditional relative frequency when you're trying to find probability is normally you'll see a notation that looks like this. This is the formula that you are actually using. You'll see it more so in parts C and D of the questions below. But the way you read this is the probability of B given that A has happened. So whatever is on the right side of this little slash notation, that is going to be what's in your total. The way that I look at it is it's currently showing as B slash A, but if you were to flip it vertically, the B is in the numerator, A is in the denominator. So whatever's on this side, that is gonna always go in your denominator. The top is gonna to be both of them. And it doesn't matter which order comes first. So here it says A and B, and that's because you're multiplying. All right, let's go ahead and answer the questions below. Part A, it says, what is the probability of selecting a student whose favorite activity is football? So all of the students that I am, I'm asking all of the students. So that's a total of 545 students, but I wanna know the only the students whose favorite activity is football. So I'm gonna go to the football column and I want all of these students. So that means I'm gonna look at this total. So the total is gonna to be 171 out of all of the students in the school, which is 500. And 45. And again, once I take, once I set that fraction up, I want the decimal version of it, or you can show me the percentage. Okay, so part B, what is the probability of selecting a ninth grader? So I still am looking at all of the students. So basically think of it like if I had a hat and I had 545 names in it, what would be the likelihood that I'm going to select a ninth grader? So then I'm gonna to go to ninth grade and I'm gonna look at how many ninth graders do I have total? So I have 155 out of the entire student population of 545. So that's how you set it up. So I'm rounding to like three places after for my decimal portion, and then I am rounding to the tenths for my percentage, but you don't have to, you can round it to the nearest percentage. So you could have said 28% or 31% here. So for part C and D, this is more the conditional, like if you were using that formula, this is where you would see it more. Keywords that you would want to look for are if and sometimes given. Sometimes they'll say given and sometimes they'll say if. It just, those are the words you're looking for. You're looking for those words because that is what's going to be in your denominator. That is gonna be your total. 
if the student selected is a 10th grader, so I know that's gonna be in my denominator, what is the probability the student prefers band? So I'm not looking at the whole school this time. I'm only looking at the 10th graders. So I'm gonna to go to my row for 10th graders. This is what's gonna be in my denominator. So out of 210 10th graders, how many of those students prefer band? So now I'm gonna to go to where band and 10th graders meet, and that's right here. So 70 out of 210 will be the way that I actually set up my probability. Part D says, what is the probability that the student is a ninth grader given that the student prefers basketball? So again, I'm not looking for the whole student body population. I only want the ones that prefer basketball. So I'm gonna look for the total students, all of my students that prefer basketball. So 211 will be in my denominator. Out of those 211 students, what's the probability that the student is a ninth grader? So I'm looking under basketball and ninth grader where they meet. And so there are 68 students out of 211. So now once I simplify that, that's gonna give me 32.2%. So again, you will see in a later video that the actual formula that I am doing right there is I'm taking where they both meet. So here the basketball and the ninth graders. So that's probability of A and B. And then I'm taking the total of whatever they were asked was given. In this case, basketball was given. So that would have been 211. All right, that's it for the video. Thumbs up, subscribe, have an awesome day. Subscribe.